So T cell maturation consists of three closely related processes. We have migration and proliferation, differentiation, and then lastly, positive, then negative selection, right? So they're born in the bone marrow, but they're kind of raised in the thymus, if you can think of it. And thymus is still considered a primary lymphoid organ, in case you don't remember that. The mature T cell then is going to leave the thymus and then travel to the secondary lymphoid tissues to do their jobs, right? Um, your thymus is really big when you're a kid, and then over time it's going to atrophy. I've already talked about this in my video on lymphoid organs. And so the T cell progenitors are going to uh, originate in the bone marrow. They're exported to the thymus in response to the chemotactic factor known as thymosin. It's a convenient name to me, at least. So thymosin is the chemotactic factor that's involved in that process. These progenitor cells are expressing the stem cell, the stem cell marker, CD34. They're not yet committed to becoming T cells. Uh, once they enter the thymus, though, they're going to interact with thymic stromal cells via the adhesion molecule CD44. That should look a little bit familiar with you. Uh, interaction with the thymic stroma is going to trigger the release of interleukin-7, resulting in proliferation. So there's a lot of uh, homology between these with the B cells, just how we talked about with the receptor structure. So about five to seven days later, after we've, we've had that processes, CD34 and CD44 expression is going to be completely lost. They're no longer stem cells. An expression of the adhesion and signaling molecules, CD2 and CD5, is going to occur. Um, for the most part of this, though, um, CD5 isn't, isn't really fully understood. CD2, however, is. But that's not really the point. As long as you understand that they're adhesion and then therefore signaling molecules, I think we'll be good. We're not stem cells anymore. Uh, the cells are referred to as thymocytes and are now committed to become either alpha, beta, or gamma, delta T cells. These immature thymocytes do not express the CD3 complex. We'll talk about that later. And then they also don't express the co-receptors at all. And so because they're not expressing either one of the co-receptors, we refer to them as double negative DN thymocytes. So this is just kind of a, a diagram showing the processes here. We have CD34 and CD44. These are stem cell surface markers, and then the other one is an adhesin protein, or adhesion protein. It's a, I call it an adhesin. Anyways, um, so we have the progenitor cell, and that's really the only thing that we're going to find here. As this starts to differentiate, it starts to develop expression of CD2 and CD5 for adhesion and signaling, the cytokine receptor for interleukin-7, and then... MHC class 1 like molecules and I think the reason for that is the fact that um, T cells are susceptible, just like every other cell on the planet is susceptible to being infected and so it is going to display that um, signal post to say in case it has been infected by a virus or in case it's gone rogue with with cancer so these are going to be there and they're going to be present um, at, at this very later stage of the lineage um, but they don't have any CD4 and they don't have any CD8 and then the TCR genes and this are totally in the germ line, but as it starts to develop, it's going to start to rearrange, and that's what we're going to talk about for a large portion of this. So this, the thymus is organized into a series of lobules. The outermost portion of it is called the cortex. It's derived from ectodermal layer, the outermost embryonic uh, tissue layer, and then the inner medulla, as its name implies, inner, is from the endodermal embryonic uh, layers. Uh, and this, the function of the thymus is really well, I guess, personified in DeGeorge syndrome, which is a developmental thing where the third and fourth pharyngeal pouches fail to develop. Basically, the thymus doesn't function right. And so they're characterized by neonatal tetany, um, like tetanus, like, you know, the tetanus shot or the tetanus toxin, which causes all those muscle contractions. Hypocalcemia, which is due to hypoparathyroidism, which is not something you want to have on top of tetany. And then, therefore, T-cell deficiency, which is what we see with thymus. Um, these infections are going to be due to very poor cell-mediated immunity because, yeah, your T-cells are <laughs> the driving force of your immune system, for the most part. The thymic strota... Um, stroma, sorry, are an epithelial network which provides a unique microenvironment for T cell development. So just like when we had the B cells, we had the stroma cells in the bone marrow. Well, this is kind of the similar thing here. The large number of hematopoietic cells of the bone marrow of bone marrow origin and thymocytes, right? So some homology there.
So two critical uh, regulators are going to take place or play a role in T-cell development. Interleukin-7 and then Notch-1. Now interleukin-7 is going to be secreted by the thymic epithelium and it's going to bind to its receptor on the thymocytes and the progenitor cells. And this is just like what we talked about with B cells, it's going to induce proliferation. The context is different, but the effect is still the same. Whereas notch-1 is something that's pretty unique, at least in this context, um, it's going to be binding to its ligand here. So this is uh, this right here is the thymocyte, this is the notch-1, and the thymic epithelium is going to have a notch ligand. And whenever this binds here, it's going to undergo autoproteolysis, it's going to cleave himself, and then the intracellular domain of notch-1 is going to act as a transcription factor. And it's going to turn on the genes essential for T-cell development at all stages, and then removes the repressive transcription factors, recruits co-activating trans... It's, it, the function of it is to initiate transcription. So transcription is going to start happening at certain genes. Um, this is structurally kind of similar to what we talked about with PAX5 um, in, in B cells. So The cortex um, contains mostly just immature thymocytes, obviously, uh, and then cortical epithelial cells. Very little amounts of macrophages. Uh, we haven't had time to, to have a lot of selective processes that are going to kill the T-cells that just got there, so we're not going to need too much of those. Um, very high rate of thymocyte mitosis, proliferation, dividing. Very sensitive to corticosteroids that are, uh, people don't always think about this, but corticosteroids not only as stress hormones, but actually do have effects on the immune system as well. And then, this is crazy to me, that over 98% of these thymocytes are going to die before they can even reach the medulla. So for every single T cell that you have floating around that's functional in your bloodstream, those guys are like Navy SEALs. They're the best of the best of the best um, from a very st strict recruiting process. So once they reach the medulla, they're kind of becoming more like mature thymocytes. They have medullary epithelial cells, um, a lot of macrophages and dendritic cells that are going to be designed to clean, clean everything up. Um, one last thing that I that doesn't mention in the slides, but this Hassel's corpuscle, this is just a designed, uh, unique set of, of macrophages that are designed to clean up all of the ones that, had, the thymocytes that have been killed by the selective processes that we had just talked about. All right, so let's talk about the thymus. There are two parts of it. There's the medulla and the cortex. The medulla is derived from endoderm whereas the cortex is derived from ectoderm because it's the outermost portion of it. It's one of the few times where those things actually line up like you'd expect them to. So both the medulla and the cortex, their epithelia do have unique structures as well, but one of the things that they have that makes them, that they have in common is stromal cells. These stromal cells are going to be secreting interleukin-7, and, and then they have the receptor for, or the ligand for, notch-1. Interleukin-7 exerts its effect, amongst other things, um, on CD2 and then CD5. Um, remembering that both of these are uh, adhesion molecules, or CAMs, um, they're going to help with development. So these guys are... proliferation is the ultimate effect of this. So for the notch-1 ligand, well, it's going to bind to the notch protein, so I'm just going to say that at notch 1, it becomes activated. And remember that notch 1 is a transcription factor. Now the medulla is a little bit more complex in terms of the cell population, or at least the cells of the medulla. You're going to see a lot more macrophages and dendritic cells, which is, I'm just going to go ahead and classify these as the antigen-presenting cells that we can find in here. Um, yeah, they're not solely there for the purposes of antigen presentation, but that's the way that we classify them. There's dendritic cells and macrophages. A unique subset of macrophages known as the Hassel's corpuscle, but th they do the same job as the macrophages. The macrophages are there to kind of clean everything up, uh, so I'll just go ahead and write this, that they're down there for cleanup, whereas the dendritic cells are there for selection. And then, of course, there's obviously there is thymocytes <laughs> located in the medulla, but only about 2% of the thymocytes that end up in the cortex will actually progress to the medulla. So in the cortex, there are a lot of thymocytes as well. Thymocytes and epithelial, epithelial cells as well. 
Now in the medulla we do have epithelia as well, I didn't mention, um, but not so much of us uh, pro providing us the functions of what we have here. Epithelial cells for the most part in the cortex are what's driving selection, and then thymocytes are uh, just kind of there for, for to be selected upon. And both of them, remember, have the stromal cells, which are forms of interacting with the epithelia um, to produce, I guess, proteins that are involved in signal proteins and signal molecules that are involved in cell development and cell differentiation.